clapped in his ear. Right. Thanks. <laughs> That's what Thanks, you get. Buddy. Really appreciate you. Yeah, and I'm learning like the ins and out of the oh, microphone. Oh yeah, like yeah. You know, and then having to I have to stay close and not speak too loud because on the first episode, because I'm Hispanic and my first guest was Hispanic. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> you guys blah, got blah, loud. Blah, 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 blah. And he's over there like, ah, I can't keep up. What is going on? It was like a DJ. Yeah, he's like, okay. Spinning and mixing it in there. At one point, he had to come in. He's like, hey, 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 hey. We're lower. And we're like, there you go. You got that, right? <laughs> you're going already. You're, up, you're already on. Perfect. Oh, there's that clap again. <laughs> So, like, stop that. Um, welcome to the show, uh, Julie Hunter. Thank you for coming out and being on this thing, on this uh, little journey of mine where I'm trying to get as much knowledge of all the different types of artists in Atlanta. And um, you are definitely one that I've been wanting to talk to because you've been everywhere. Um, for those who don't know, uh, you are a huge part of Aperture Rent, mm-hmm. right? Yep. And I, I was love the Aperture first Rent. employee after the owners. When yeah. they started it, they I was the first employee that they hired. Now they have like 12 or 13 people. Yeah, they moved on up. Yeah, yeah. Because they started in one building, and then next thing you know, they... but they Well, they, they started at Starbucks. Right. And then they moved oh, into yeah. a little tiny office. It was about this size. Yeah. And I was the... I was I worked there, and then we moved over to the bigger one, and then now they're in that huge one. So. Yeah. Well, in Atlanta, and then they also have Dallas, Texas, of course. Yeah, no, and this... To me, they were one of the easiest to work with. Um, I still use them every day. Plug mm. for, you know, Aperture Rent. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then um, and then you started uh, uh, Natural Boudoir. Yep, Naturally right? Boudoir. Mm-hmm. Naturally Boudoir. Um, and, man, some of those photos are awesome. I love some <laughs> of those shots. Those shots are awesome. Uh, you use a lot of... Um, Awesome little lighting techniques, you know, yeah. subtle lighting techniques. And we I call always, it moody in the industry. Yeah, yeah, it's I all love moody light. and dark. I love <laughs> like just molding in colors of light. Oh, that's yeah mm, mm, to me. <laughs> um, and a lot of people were excited to have you on because you're really, really vocal in the community when it comes to like model safety and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, I am a big mouth, yes. <laughs> um, and well, I, you know, I kind of was curious about that. I'm kind of curious to see, you know. The ins and out of all that to me, it, it kind of seems well. To me, it's a little kind of scary, you know, because it's mm-hmm. a lot of attention. And then, especially today, it's just this whole madness is just getting crazier and crazier and crazier. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, but really, all we want to talk about is what photographers and models should do um, today to you know just to be smarter about going on these shoots and mm-hmm. kind of you know be on the be, be aware, be vocal, be aware, mm-hmm. you know. Um, yeah, I think one of the main things over the last, because uh, I think it was about seven or eight years ago when uh, Amanda Keller first approached me about uh, helping her run a, a model safety group, and it, you know, there wasn't there wasn't much talked about in the open airway about right. this photographer, or that photographer. It was more really, really hushed um, between models mostly, um, and then sometimes not even then. Which is really bad because if something bad happens, the first thing I would want a model to do is to tell her model, for, especially if it happens to her firsthand. Right. Like I would want her to say, hey, don't go shoot with photographer X because he touched me or he was completely inappropriate or he raped me or whatever. You right. know, obviously, uh, well, I say first. First thing if they got raped is I would want them to go report it to the police if right. they could. Um uh, just to touch on one thing really quickly is the public, uh, if I ever say anything publicly about a photographer who has touched a model, the first backlash I get is, well, why haven't they gone to report it? Right. And my response to that is I can't make a model do anything that they're not prepared to do. Right. Of course, I would go. I have offered myself personally to drive them, walk them into the police department. I've done a lot of research, like what county you're supposed to report in, um, all of that stuff. I know everything that you need to do to report something. So, I, I mean, and I'm making a declaration publicly now on your on your little segment here saying, you know, if there's ever a model that's ever right. been hurt and she needs to report it and she is fearful. I've had girls fearful of telling their families because they were yeah. married. 
and they didn't want to tell their spouse because they were afraid that they would not let them model anymore. Right. Um, because they didn't want to tell their family because they thought their parents wouldn't let them go, mo- you know, or would be ashamed of them or, right. you know, they, or maybe that whole, I told you so. Yeah. Thing, that, you know. and you know, like they would get the blame instead of, you know, and gosh, we definitely don't want to blame the model, you know? Right. So, um, like you were asking, uh, there's definitely common sense things that, you know, we right. thought, we're common sense. Common sense and but so we're, common. But we're, <laughs> it's crazy. We're quite I don't understand learning, some yeah. of these things. <laughs> I mean, so one of the things that we definitely suggest is taking um, uh, an escort with you to mm-hmm. every session on the model side. And then if you're a male model, for instance, I shoot, uh, or excuse me, I do workshops with boudoir. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of male models or male photographers that will come in and I say, hey, the best thing you can do is hire a female makeup artist and mm-hmm. have her with you the whole time. Right. Because that model can't say anything about you if you have someone there with you. And that's for your protection. Right. And so, you know, I'm in it to protect the photographers just as just as I am in it to protect the models. Right. And so if a photographer is on the up and up and he's professional, there's nothing he should fear out of working with anybody, clients. No, or really shouldn't. And then, exactly. you know, from because uh, I've been in this game for a while and uh, it's always been my uh, goal before anything to make sure that the, whoever is involved in the, in the photo shoot, either in front or behind the camera, that they know what's going on. You know, mm-hmm. what the shoot is. I want to know their input. I want to know what makes them comfortable and whatever I can do to make sure that everything goes as smooth as possible, you know, happens. And I think that is the beginning of a solution is that somebody needs to take it upon themselves. If you're the photographer, make sure you're vocal about mm-hmm. what you're going to do. You know, set up a meeting before the shoot, you know, talk about, hey, this is my work. Mm -hmm. This is how I do things. Right. This is what you can expect so that when the model shows up the day of, there's no surprises. Here's the common sense thing that you wouldn't think that you'd have to mention, but Mm -hmm. like, don't show them pictures of birds and then ask them to get nude once they arrive. (laughs) And then, okay. And then common sense 101. (laughs) And then the other thing too is, um, you know, models don't be afraid to be vocal about what you expect and what right. you and do. And what you don't want. <laughs> exactly. So right. that's why I think that having that line of communication before mm-hmm. the camera is even taken out of the case. Yes. You know, both parties need to be aware and mm-hmm. they need to know what the other is capable of and all that. Yeah. Um, and just you know, try to make, it's a team effort. I don't understand why, you know, some photographers kind of treat models like, oh, well, this is my way and that's it. Yeah. And I get it. But you also have to remember that, hey, a little input could actually make your project a lot better. Yeah. I mean, like I work with some I have like, you know, I think we all have like a kind of a small circle of models that we really Mm. like to work with just because uh, you know that you work together as a team and there's not like this is my way and the model's not coming in saying it's my way. Um, and so I, I wish photographers would understand that the more you open yourself up to their creativity being a part of, Mm -hmm. uh, the session makes it a whole lot better. I mean, like there's sometimes I will have a full fledged plan in my mind coming into a session, but I'm, I'm still keep my, my door open because if something happens, you know, weather changes, sun shifts or something like that. And the model says, Hey, why don't we do, I'm not going to go. Well, no, this is my session. You know, right. no, I'm going to wait and listen to her, and she probably has a better idea than, right. you know, or at least a good avenue to go take that left, you know, that we weren't expecting. Right. So that's just and always a good thing. Especially, and I don't know, I might be wrong, but it kind of seems that a lot of these issues come about when it's, quote, unquote, not a professional shoot. Like, mm-hmm. it's not a like a corporate gig where there's many people involved. There's usually, like, some of these lower-tier type of photo shoots uh, especially like, you know, trade for print type stuff. Right. Um, where nobody's, you know, making any money. They're just kind of doing it for their portfolio or whatever. And I, I guess that, I don't, I don't know what it is. I, I have an idea of what it is. Mm-hmm. And then you work in the Aperture Rent. Maybe you can, you know, maybe we can discuss this. I feel that as technology has gotten easier and more accessible, mm-hmm. almost everybody is a photographer. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Everybody and everybody's grandma is a photographer. Oh, we have a fresh batch from Christmas. Yeah. You know, oh, every, yeah, yeah. every Christmas you get a fresh batch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, anybody can just grab a camera, mm-hmm. you know, and say, hey, 
I live on Instagram. I want to shoot some of these uh, gorgeous ladies, and they're going to go in it with a mentality that you know, I'm just going to use this to pick up girls. And hey, look, I'm a professional, and they'll buy yeah. the biggest, fanciest camera, and you mm-hmm. know, or not, you know, yeah, or not. But you know, <laughs> yeah. and then they'll well, they'll, they'll, let, me, they'll, let they'll, me just touch on the. I yeah. know I said or not in a funny way, but let me just for the models out there, when I say or not, I'm talking about like. I'm not saying you should go with a certain photographer because he has more expensive gear. However, you can't expect high quality images right. out of, and Michael can back me up on this. I'm not going to bash having low end gear because, you know, right. you can take any gear and make a beautiful image with the correct lighting. Yeah. But if you don't understand lighting and right. also you have That's crappy. That's the biggest part of the yeah. whole thing. So like crappy lighting and crappy gear equals right. crappy photos. Right. Period. Let's just say that and leave it there. Like <laughs> to the amateur photographers, I get it. Yeah. Blankets oh, totally. make great diffusers. Yeah. <laughs> but models, if you show up to a set and it's a blanket for a backdrop, a blanket for a diffuser, <laughs> you know, like yeah. the, check, check the blanket ratio. You know, you don't want more than two blankets because otherwise, like, okay, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> but if that's the case, know that going in. Right. You know, and then maybe ask him, how many blankets do you have? You know, what's your, what's your, what's your P ratio? You know, what is your B ratio? Um, but, you know, and then obviously we're not, I'm not trying to ask models to like know the in oh, and no, out of yeah, photography, yeah. but know a little bit so that mm-hmm. you can basically cut the bullshit, you yeah, know? Yeah. Um, but on the flip side, I've shown up to uh, some workshops where, um, you know, I'm showing up with my, you know, decent, you know, uh, D800, you mm-hmm. know, a nice little prime lens and, you know, I'm, I'm good. And then you have somebody show up with like three Pelican cases and they got like the latest yeah, uh, like a camera with the all the 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 prime night core gold line lenses and flashes and meters and mm-hmm. a lot of this stuff has like no scratches and it's like <laughs> okay this guy just has a lot of money he's showing <laughs> off his camera and i guarantee you he's a he's a shit shooter i call them oh, shit yeah. shooters these guys click 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 oh yeah click, 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 click. no it's called spray and pray <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think, yep, I got one. We're good. Yeah. You know, I make yeah. my shots count. But, oh, you know what's really good yeah. is when they come in and take that many photos and you never see anything posted. That's when it's really weird. And, you know, I've heard <laughs> that those guys, they, they do post them, but not on places oh, that you God. would expect. Now, that's what I don't want to hear. <laughs> that's when it's creepy. And so so it's, it, it is hard, not just for the models, but for photographers as well. But, yeah, yeah. you know, the more you are aware of, the, the the ins and out of the industry that you're in, whether mm-hmm. you're a model and photographer, the better you'll be off because you can you can really get to the bottom of somebody just by looking how they work. Like yeah. my gear is beat to shit. Oh you yeah, know, my beauty dish has got dings and scratches mm-hmm. and places where I hammered out. Right, you know, but it shows Mine's that not it gets anymore used. because I don't work at Aperture anymore. <laughs> so I had to be like really baby in my stuff because right. I'm like I can't take a lens whenever I want right. to anymore. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I totally understand yeah. what you're saying. But, so what I'm getting at is like, have you? Did anybody ever show up where you just be like, man, I don't know about this guy, just to get gear, just to, like, I don't know if you've ever seen that, where weekend shooters, let's call them, you know, like, they just oh, yes. buy a camera just to go, you know, have their way with so, the models. So, several times, okay, so, first of all, I was the one that would answer the phone, like, 90% of the time. So, right. if someone called in and they were like, hey, I'm doing my wedding, my first wedding, mm. I-, I can't tell you, like, <laughs> at least every weekend I would hear, I'm doing my first wedding this weekend. Right. And just now they're thinking about buying, you know, like running gear. Right. And I'm like, it's this weekend? That's scary. Ugh. That's scary. Okay, so you've never used it before, but you're going to rent the D4. I Let's wish. see about this. <laughs> I wish. You know, like um, they have no clue about full frame. They don't right. know that they have to get full frame lenses. Right. So what's, I have to. What's DX? Yeah. What is that? I have to like educate them about all of that. And then, you know, sometimes, uh, thankfully with Oscar's permission, I, I basically would downgrade what they, right. because they were like, I was told I should get this. Well, right. why? No. They're just tools. The, yeah, and, and, then, and then that's the other thing. So I'm like, you've been a photographer for a while. I've been a photographer for a while. And I always like to say like, give me a disposable camera. I'll get something for you. Yeah, I get yeah. something out of it. Yeah. Um, so I, uh, hopping over that desk, Laszlo. I love Laszlo. <laughs> uh, Laszlo chimes in from time to time. as We all know now. Um, but, the importance of knowing your lighting mm-hmm. will make your photography game just it explode. Does. Yeah. But if you're going in thinking that, you know, I have to buy the most expensive lens mm-hmm. um, and the most expensive camera and I'm 
automatically a good photographer. Right. You're going to find out really quick you're wrong. You know what the funny thing is, is the way I would usually deter people is I say there's no auto on the D4. Yeah. 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 No, I so, even tell people like, <laughs> if you don't know you how don't to need use to it, shoot auto, period. <laughs> well, I'm saying. Yeah. Even. <laughs> Even if you wanted to, there's really right. no auto on, on that D4. D4. So, like, you have to have some sort of... It's like trying to drive a stick shift right? when you've never on done it Lambo before. Lambo, and all you're used yeah. to is, like, the smart car. <laughs> um, this is not a Tesla. It will no, not drive it, by yeah, itself. Yeah, but, you know, and everybody... Well, lately, I've noticed that a lot of people do rely on that. And um, I guess I just want to... Let's wrap up the model safety thing because there's so much more fun stuff that I want to talk about. But yeah. I know every, people were coming in to listen to you about this because <laughs> you're vocal okay. on all this. But um, my goal, like I said, is just what is it that you think photographers should know? Like, I guess, like a basic, call it top five. Things, uh, <laughs> hey, don't do this and you'll be all right. Or if, is there even such a thing? So I, I think... I don't know if I could do a top five, but I can definitely do the very, f the main thing that I think everything boils down to, no matter mm -hmm. what the issue is and all of these stories that I've heard, I feel like in the, in the last year, especially, mm -hmm. I mean, it's happened month after month after month in the last year. It's, it's boiled down to communication. I think so. Agreed. And, and when I say communication, the first thing people think is, oh yeah, I email or I text or I do what, no, no, no. I'm not talking about just sending a message. I'm talking about, to, you know, having clear communication. Yeah. Get on the phone. You need to hear a voice. With the person yeah. that you want to work with, number one. Yep. Because you will hear if they really want to work with you or not. Right. They, they can fake it as, as, copy, paste. as easy Everybody as knows the next copy, person. Everybody knows copy, paste. It's 2018. Oh, yeah. Copy, one. paste, message. There you go. Number two. So talk to somebody. They may not be English as a first language. This has become a major problem yeah. in the photo industry in the last six months. I literally had someone in Rise mm. recently who had posted something on his like his personal page and a model saw it and she like copied and pasted it into Rise and she was like, What's going on with this guy? I do not understand him. Like so I understood what he was saying because right. from I'm a photographer, this was a model, and she was like, I don't understand, I don't agree with what he's saying. And I said, All right. Let me, let me look at this from my side, like mm -hmm. as a photographer. And then like, so, you know, we're all online and I'm like on the, uh, like a pull up in a new window while I'm f coming up with my answer for her. And I see that I'm friends with this guy. And I was like, right. oh, I know him. Like, cause I'm, I got 5,000 friends. I don't know if I know them all. So I pull him over and I'm like, oh, Hey, I'm going to pull him into rise. And right. we're going to have an open discussion about this so that this is the point of Rise. And by the way, I keep mentioning Rise. It's a group on Facebook mm -hmm. that is trying to bring together in a public forum. It's a closed group, but an open group. Right. To where models, photographers, it's co-ed, no holes barred, basically. Drama free. We don't we don't let drama in there. But That's if an issue today. Yeah, if a, if an issue comes I have a lot of moderators. <laughs> I'm cut you out real quick. Yeah. Um, but anyway, if an issue comes up, if I can discuss it in an open forum, that is the best way to combat all of this stuff that's going on. Because I feel like, and you know, there's a lot of th like personal threads that go out there mm -hmm. where they're bashing people. And I'm not talking down about that, except for I don't feel like that ever is fruitful. Because right. I feel like if I have a problem with the model and I go to post about her, probably I've already blocked her. Right. So she can't really respond. Right. Uh, and so it's not an open forum. It's not an open communication. So in Rise, I try to bring them, sit down at the table together, you know, online mm -hmm. and say, hey, let me be your mediator. You tell me what you were trying to say and let me see if I can communicate to that to the model. Or sometimes this really is just messed up. And I just right. go, oh, well, <laughs> we're not going to win with this conversation. That's the importance of having to talk to somebody like live in person or right. over the phone. Well, to let you know, like that particular situation, the guy was foreign. Mm hmm. And he was saying, this is what he was trying to say. I'm being taken advantage of. I don't want to shoot TF unless it mm. also includes nudes. Because I don't uh. want to do anything free that doesn't include nudes. I don't mind shooting with clothes on. Right. But if I'm going to do it for free, at some point you need to take that's your a, clothes that's off. That's a flag right there. Well, no, it's not a flag. No? Okay, let me explain. Because it sounds like a flag, right. sort of, if you think about it in a creepy zone. Right. But think about me. 
I do the same thing. I say, right. if you want me, actually, I don't do, I don't want to put this out here. I really don't do TF anymore. <laughs> but if there was something that I needed for my, if there was some kind of like, whatever, for my portfolio, if I needed to reach out to a model and do something, mm-hmm. uh, or if a girl reaches out to me and at that moment I go, hey, you know, I actually could use some extra pictures. It's only going to be for my boudoir. Mm-hmm. Like if she says to me, well, no, I don't really want to do a lingerie. Right. Okay, well, I, I really don't have a need for that. I'm sorry. Right. Well, interject, uh, what is T, TF? TF is trade for, which means it's kind of like code in the photo industry for free. Yeah, yeah, basically. Like, so for Exchanging. example, yeah, yeah, okay. So for those who don't know, good point. Thank yeah. you. See, so we got photographers. We got, <laughs> I got to remember, some of y'all ain't photographers. So uh, real quick. So for example, a photographer and a model get together and like, there's no money exchange. It's like, hey, for my time and my services, I will give you a certain amount of photos for your portfolio in exchange for your time for being a model. And typically, usually, it benefits both parties. Yeah, it's supposed That's the to. Idea. Yeah, it's supposed but to. Yeah. Lately, it's been very one-sided. I <clears throat> yeah, and so um, this anyway. So this guy, he was saying like, I don't mind shooting you with clothes on, mm-hmm. but if we're going to do a TF, you have to take a like. I want there to be some nudes that come out of it, mm-hmm. and it has to be where I can use them in my portfolio, whatever, right. blah blah blah. And so uh, he was not saying that as straight as I'm telling you. Right. He was. And as and as weird as you heard it, yeah. is how weird it came out on Facebook. And of course, she like she copied him. No, and no fault for her because right. it, it did sound really creepy and weird. Because right. my first reaction was like, Ugh. oh, but wait, I kind of do the same. Like, so I was right. like, what if it was me? Like, how would I say? And I was like, I kind of say this. I actually told a girl recently who I've shot several times, and she doesn't want to do boudoir at all. And I was like, I'm sorry, I can't do free anymore. I'm sorry. Right. We shot back in. You know, ninety nine, well, I mean, but I don't got some do that time anymore. In you know? your career, you know, you're you're allowed to be picky. I mean, like, yeah. same goes for me. Like, there's just some things like, hey, if it's not gonna benefit me, I'd just rather not do it. I mean, if people understood that I've I've been shooting for fifteen years and I have a different face in front of me at least once a week, right. I really don't need faces for my portfolio right. anymore. I love you guys. You're all beautiful. I just I don't have time. <laughs> but um, anyway, so I, I pulled him in and I said, hey, I forgot what his name is, Roberto, I think, or something like that. Anyway, so I pulled him in and I'm like, hey, mm-hmm. I see what you're trying to say. I totally agree with you. I'm the same way. Right. I only need boudoir TF. Again, he did not understand what I was saying. He started to attack me. Lost in translations. I'm the one in the group <laughs> trying right. to like bridge him over to the rest of, but see, right. he, he'd already been attacked on his own Facebook. Mm. So he came in to rise, like already by, like he was attacked by, let's say he was friends? on the seventh round of his boxing match and I pulled him in and he's already that's... like huffing and puffing from being yeah. attacked over there. So I understood that he was already on defensive mode, right? but several times I tried to get him to understand, but he, his English was so mm-hmm. poor that he was not understanding that I was actually defending him. Right. And so finally I said, okay, well, we're beating a dead horse and he's not really getting my point. I think everybody right. here knows what I'm trying to say. I think it's okay. Right. I think he's actually okay. Right. He just doesn't know how to communicate. And we're just going to leave it with that. And right. I closed the commenting on the thread. And that's my, that's my uh, little magic weapon right. in the group is when if commenting goes awry or drama starts up, we yeah. just turn off the commenting. So we have control. <laughs> like, um, I'm gonna tie into that with one of my own experiences. Okay. But we're gonna come right back to that with okay. you know the the loss in translation thing because yes. I have my own little oopsie with that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but like the way I see it, just to kind of wrap this whole thing up. Yep. Um, is just if you're serious about doing this as a career, as a photographer, mm-hmm. see it as an actual profession. Like if you wouldn't do it under like your boss's eyes you know Mm -hmm. then you shouldn't do it if nobody's watching just be smart right know what you want to do it doesn't matter what you want to do you want to do nudes you want to do boudoir you want to do fancy you want to do fashion it doesn't matter it does not matter Mm -hmm. but just make sure that you again you're vocal and and aware about uh how you present yourself how Mm -hmm. you treat those around you and i know it happens because i i'm a perfect example if you're on a shoot and it's going great, you know, and the chemistry is good, mm-hmm. and maybe there's a spark there, you know. Mm-hmm. Don't don't act on it right then and there. In a session, right. You know, just That's be a good cool point. about it. Be suave about it. Because yeah. I met my wife mm-hmm. on a mega shoot. Yeah. And, um, you know, it 
real quick short story. So uh, make shoot, 10 photographers, and like, I think it was like six models. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm a sucker for redheads. And she was a redhead. <laughs> and um, and at, at that point in my career, I was like, eh, I was kind of just there just to be there. Yeah. And um, she kind of knew of me. And then we just kind of hit it off. We were like in the, in the zone. You know, when you're with a model, you're just like, oh, perfect. Ooh, good. Perfect angle. Lights. Oh, it's just amazing, right? Yeah. So time kept flying and then other models were like hey when do i get my chance to shoot with you you know oh, I, yeah. I like your work too i'm like give me one second one second one second <laughs> I'm just keep shooting her real quick and then same thing with her you know photographers wanted to talk to her and she's like i got a good thing right here and then we ended up only shooting together right, right. and then um just to get nerdy found out that she likes video games i like video games so we started <laughs> talking about it and then Fast forward 10 years, we've been together ever since. You mm. know, so I understand that sometimes you, you know, you do you connect, know, connect yeah. with an individual, but just to, you know, on the, I guess, you know, side of caution, just be smart about it. Don't do it right then and there because right. you might open yourself for, for some blowback. That's definitely something I've said because I have a lot of guy mm. photographer friends and they're like, you know, but what, you know, I was like, look, I was single. Mm-hmm. And if you didn't actually meet somebody in the industry, you weren't going to meet somebody because all of your time is spent around industry people. And like, you know, some people are like, oh, I would never date another photographer. Oh, I would never date a model. Or, oh. I'm like, you're never going to date anybody. You if you're not know. open yep. to someone in your same industry, all I'm asking and all you just said was be professional during the session. If there's yep. a spark or something, you both are going to know. Address that maybe later. Now, don't get creepy in her inbox, for God's sake. Oh, no. again. If it's not a two way street, <laughs> be Fonzie about it. No, no, be cool, man. Be, be cool. Just be cool <laughs> you know? It's chess, not checkers. You know? It's not a race. <laughs> like, if she's not responding in the same way, if there wasn't a spark between the both of you and she's not mm-hmm. there, like, okay, go mm-hmm. back to being, you know, like, drop it. Yeah. Like, that's don't. It. Just be- move on. Because there are a lot of guys who think. There was something, and I'll, you know what? I can share from my side of it because mm-hmm. I'm a female photographer, and I was shooting this uh, one guy a mm-hmm. long time ago. And the way I get people to give me their real face is sometimes, you know, I kind of flirt with them. Right. And, you know, and it's just what we do. It's, a lot of people would co- probably consider it flirting, mm-hmm. but I'm I'm just really kind of getting to see what your real smile looks like, right. or and I have to tell a joke or what. Right. It's like you're, you know you're your trying to date. break through that barrier it's, to the real yeah, person. You're, yeah, it's totally kind of like a you. first date or yeah. just kind of like breaking down that nervousness. And but when you come in with a camera, you're walking in with the, you're Mr. Confidence or uh, right. in my place I was Miss Confidence. And um, so I was just like chatting up this guy and I was getting the best angles, you know, best pictures out of him. Mm. And at the end of it, he was like, oh, hey, well, so when are we going to go out? And I was like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I literally didn't like come on to him. I right. just was like chatting him up and like right. getting him to. And he just was like, you know, because it probably was like one of the only times someone's ever really like talked to him that way. Right. Uh, well, like that, I guess, in a professional sense. And, and so um, anyway, big miss. Like, but you that's know. how tricky yes. it can get because <laughs> just like a, like a male photographer can approach the situation the yes. exact same way, right? Exactly. And the model can misunderstand that as something yes. completely different, and then they start blasting people on Facebook, and then mm-hmm. it's a snowball effect, and then the photographer's like, "Wait, I did what? I was just trying to be, what the hell? Oh shit!" So yeah. now they're stuck in a situation. Um, but that's, that's how tricky it can be. So yeah, be very careful guys. Yeah, just Everybody all around. Girls. And then, you know, <laughs> like I get, and if, if you are in a relationship, like that's my golden ticket, I guess I would call it because yeah. the first thing that, uh, most of my clients and models that I work with, the first thing they find out is that I am married yeah. and most of the time I don't even shut up about my wife, you yeah. know? Um, but so, you know, kind of use that, just, you know, um, just <laughs> make the situation as fun as possible as friendly as possible Mm -hmm. and if you think it might come off as creepy then just don't do it yeah it's simple as that and then models you know (laughs) just again be very vocal and be aware of the person that you're you're shooting with and same deal just be safe be smart if somebody says hey meet me at midnight at the this hotel (laughs) don't bring nobody (laughs) don't do it no thank you it's all right (laughs) Um, it's, it, it should be a back and forth between yeah. both artists, right? The model and the, and the mm-hmm. photographer. And if you don't have to shoot with that photographer, especially how we were talking, how, you know, you know it think, easy is technology. Yeah. There's a lot of photographers out there. I 
think if you think about it, really, I, you know, I think we take it for granted a little bit because you and I have been shooting it for so long. But if mm. you think about like if you were to work, if you were brand new, say, mm. in photography, right? But you go to work with a girl that's been shooting for a while. Mm-hmm. And you know as well as I do, there are some models when you put that, like, they're sweet as pie, you know, right. everyday girl. But when you pull the camera up, they put on work face. Like, they right. are super, like, you're like, whoa, this is like a, a right. mega deal, like, model. This because she's real. Yeah, her face right. completely goes magazine quality. And you're right. like, whoa, that's like a look I've never seen before. And they just, they're professional, right? Right. All right, now, if you were just starting out and, mm-hmm. like, you saw that, Right. All of a sudden, because typically hobbyist photographers or brand new photographers mm-hmm. don't get to work with that quality model. Right. But if for some reason, like they're at a group shoot or whatever, and they work with that girl and she turns that on, mm-hmm. they may misconstrue that as true some chemistry because they are they are working the camera. Right. L- guys, let me say that again. For those that didn't hear the first time, they are working the camera. Right. They're not working the guy behind it. Right. Because the shoot's not for you, it's for her. Yes. If, if you're working with somebody of that caliber. But also, it's the same deal. Yeah. If you think that way or if you feel that way, approach it after the shoot. Yes. Right? Just pro cap for now. Put and it to you, the side. You'll and know if, right and, away. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you'll know very, very quickly. <laughs> She'll let um, you know. <laughs> but, and then it goes back to just be vocal and aware. Yes. I'm going to keep saying that over and over. Okay. If you're the photographer at that level, mm-hmm. right, and yeah. you're working with somebody that experienced, don't be afraid to talk to her yeah. or him. Mm-hmm. Hey, you've been doing this for a while. How am I doing? I'm a I'm a like a whore for feedback. I'm always like, what you think? Did I do do I do this well? Any pointers? Any tips? Because I just want to keep growing. You know, I want to yeah, learn. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the other thing that annoys me. If you run into a photographer who says they know everything about photography, Ugh. they're full of shit. No. Right? Ten Not, years. Nobody I'm knows. Still everything. learning. Yeah. Um. So just put it to the side and just approach it another dime. Mm-hmm. Uh. Or just be vocal with the with the model. And she will more than likely help you, mm-hmm. right? Because she understands. Because yeah. she's been there before, or he's been there before, and they'll be like, "Yeah, yeah just maybe this, maybe that." You know, don't mm-hmm. do this. You know, it might be you know right. taken different way. Um, but I think we just solved the problem, Julie. Just I think be we vocal. Did. That's all you got. Everybody do. would just listen. <laughs> yeah. And then okay, so going back to yeah. this whole uh, uh, miscommunication and yeah. languages and all that. So here's the problem that I've discovered is that. You just can't go off of text online or mm-hmm. on your phone because you don't know what the context or the intent of that message is, right? Mm-hmm. Because you may be like, I can't wait to see you tomorrow, you know? <laughs> I, it's going to be excited, you know? That's how I wrote it. But they may really like, ooh, I can't wait to see you tomorrow. I'm so excited. <laughs> like, wait, wait, what do you mean? So it's, there's way too much room or because I know when you're by yourself and you're reading stuff and there's nobody around you, of course, just thoughts start going through your noggin and mm-hmm. then you start second guessing and then you start feeling, you know what, all this crazy shit that's going on in the world. Maybe this guy is being a creep. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's that is an issue to me. I feel uh, when it comes to almost every interaction between photographer, model, critique, or whatever, just communication on. Um, when it comes to like uh, your work of art, because to me, all my work is very personal. Mm-hmm. Even if it's client's oh. work, I want mm-hmm. I want it to be personal because I want it to be the best it can be. Oh, yeah. So if somebody says something, you're very like guarded sometimes. Mm-hmm. Luckily, I've been able to shed that kind of off right? yeah. mm-hmm. through you know just working Can't on please my everybody. Yeah, yeah, working yeah. on my mind. Right. <laughs> um, so, I like it. I don't care what you think. <laughs> yeah, you know, and then that's the whole point. If you yeah. like it, who cares? <laughs> um, but I think that starts a lot of issues. So my experience on the AP, uh, the Atlanta Photographers Guild Facebook group chat. Oh, uh, it's a chat. Oh, it's a page. <laughs> See? It's okay, yeah, it's a... I was like, what is that? So it started on Flickr, and now right. we have an That's APG right. uh, a Facebook page, yeah. Right. And then it was a place where... Oh, it still is a place. Oh, I haven't been on it in a while <clears throat> mm-hmm. because of this. Um, people upload their photos, uh, amateurs, professionals, and then people go on there and they critique, right? Mm-hmm. Um and then there was this one time I posted this photo of this orange sun-kissed can at a lowrider show. And behind that can was a, was a, a lowrider, right? Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, the, they kind of match and the colors are awesome. It's popping. You know, oh, I'm going to take a picture of the can and be like, <laughs> sun-kissed ad, you know? Everybody's going to love this. Everybody's going to love it. And then everybody <laughs> did love it. And then I, I was like, oh, okay, I'll put it on APG because I heard about it. And right. I was like, oh, okay, cool. 
Um, <laughs> Let's get ripped to shreds. Yeah. <laughs> and then I posted it, and then some people were nice, and other people weren't. Um, and I was getting a little guarded, but then because I was already in that state of mind, I was, you know, because I would look at some of the critiquers. Oh, yeah. And then go to the their page, part, yeah. and it's like, you got one fucking photo. <laughs> Who the fuck? Mother- fuck you. And it's a butterfly. Yeah, what is this shit? Who are, what, man? <laughs> So this one guy <laughs> said, hey, here's my critique. Don't shoot. <laughs> right? And then he he put some other uh, things down there. Because English is not my first language, <laughs> I took it literal, uh, literally. So I was like, Man, fuck you, don't shoot. I'm going to shoot all I want. Tell me not to shoot. Watch. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm going to shoot right now. And I'm going to post it. But I was getting angry. I think what he meant was, here's my critique. Don't shoot. You know, oh, oh, yeah, don't like, shoot me. Yeah, for saying, <laughs> but that's how easy it is to right. misunderstand. And yes. then I took it very personal. <laughs> I've learned now that you just can't do that. You just can't. Um, yeah. Because you will just go down that rabbit hole, and then you'll second guess your, your well, work. I truly believe a typo is going to cause World War Three. I mean, it almost already has. <laughs> I mean, because people like it almost already has. You know, you read text and, and like you want to like respond right away, and you're like, "What right. the?" And they're like, "Oh, no, I'm sorry, sorry, I meant to say." And you're like, "Oh, well, that well, changes the, the whole like it changes yeah, the whole look context." Look at the Hawaii missile thing. Oh, cool. oops, oops. What timing, right? Like Jesus. Oh, sorry, y'all go back to sleep. Sorry, you have Never more than ten mind. minutes. <laughs> I like that one guy that was like playing golf in the middle of it. He's like, "If I'm gonna die, I'm just gonna go out playing." <laughs> right. Yeah, he was on the news, but so that led me. And then uh, this is kind of my issue. So I got off of it and I was like, is this, a, uh, is this an ongoing thing? Like I want to see other people's work and how people respond to other people's work. Mm-hmm. And I saw that that was going on a lot. Like there will be a new photographer who, you know, generally just wants some feedback to improve their craft, right. not to get destroyed and oh, like yeah. scared away. And I saw that that was, a lot of the times that was the case. There wasn't any constructive criticism Mm -hmm. as much as there should have been. I would say, uh, especially when we were on Flickr, Mm -hmm. I would always caution new photographers to, like, if you don't have thick skin, I probably wouldn't throw my picture into the pool because, um, and not necessarily because they were automatically being a dick Mm -hmm. about their opinion, but there are a lot of seasoned photographers in there and they're mm-hmm. just trying, they're very bluntly telling you what you should do. Mm-hmm. And let's say some, most of the time, and they'll tell you this too, like, I think you just wanted to pat on the back. I don't think you really wanted to critique or you really wanted me to tell you what to and do. And sometimes that is the case. And that is the case. And, you know, it's funny. One of my friends used to used to uh, get on to me all the time about Flickr because mm-hmm. he was like, oh, you're just in it for the likes or the comments or whatever. You know, you just get petted all the time. Right. Oh, Julie, you're so good. Oh, but, but if anybody really told you how you were, and he was just being silly, but he was like, right. if anybody really told you how it was, you probably wouldn't put your pictures up. Right. And I was like, no, I, I would appreciate a valid uh, critique. Right. It, and I do the same thing. If somebody critique, well, it's been a while since somebody's actually critiqued my work. I probably come off as a like, oh, you're a you know, like, no, you a badass. You a badass. Just I mean, so like, you know. don't say anything mean to me, or I'll like eat your head or something. But, uh, but if someone did try to critique me, mm-hmm. I would do the first thing that you did, which was mm-hmm. click on the, there and right. go, "Who's talking to me?" Right. And I probably shouldn't do that, but I do have more reverence for someone who is above me mm-hmm. in the, or at least. My equal. Right. You don't have to be necessarily above, but be my equal. Don't right. be a hobbyist. Every other weekend, exactly. you go out and shoot dogs and butterflies, and right. you want to come tell me about how I shoot boudoir. Right. It's like, mm, mm, sh, sh, sh. right. <laughs> they're they're um you know they're the type of people that they will watch four or five you know YouTube videos and they think they know what they're doing yeah. or they know they get the what thumbs up and yeah. come back from me. I'm like, mm, thanks. Yeah. So <laughs> that's what that means to me. <laughs> and you know what? And then this kind of that's the weird thing that a lot of the <laughs> more vicious critiques are from people who themselves aren't even legit yeah. photographers. Well, it's like in every other, like, let's take photography out of it. And yeah. you know, yeah, politi- it's across the board, political, every thread has your, yeah. what trolls. do you call them? Your trolls. Yeah. And I feel like photography especially has some right. mega trolls, you right. know, and a group of 8,000, which was what the APG has. Right. Of course we're going to have trolls. I mean, you can't really, and I am an admin. I've been mm-hmm. an admin for like 10 years. So, like, uh, one of our jobs as the admin is to make sure we flick out the, you know, like, the, just yeah. mega trolls. Look I mean, there's... The bridge and make sure there's no trolls in there's there. There's good and, critique that may yeah. be hard to hear, and then there's just trolls, you know, right. and we just get rid of those. Right. So. But, you know, 
when you get in this game, just remember, <laughs> as can. a photographer, <laughs> don't worry about what anybody else says. Yeah, no. Because in the end, what is the art is the eye to behold. There's, yes. Yeah, you know, so somebody is going to Unless like you're really work. sucky, then listen. <laughs> um, you always want to look for, um, like you said, somebody who is experienced and on a higher level and listen to them, study them, like treat mm-hmm. this, like just be real about what you're doing and then mm-hmm. you will get far. Yeah. Um, but and if don't this is just, ask you them know, to teach you for free either. No, no, that's, don't do that. No, that's do not that. cool. Do that. That's one of the cool things about the APG. And that's where I actually learned. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, if you want to know how I learned was going to APG meetings because I had no idea what a pocket wizard was. I had no idea what an alien bee was. I mm-hmm. didn't know any of that stuff until I went to those meetings and they're like, here, have a pocket wizard. Right. Throw it on your camera. I was like, what is what is F what is four? What, what, you know? Right. And so like uh, a friend of mine was actually going through a photography class. So he taught me about ISOs and F fours mm-hmm. where as APG was actually helping me like hands on learning it. Mm-hmm. And so like, I literally learned everything within two months of going to APG like every other week. Right. And then I met another small group of photographers and we shot on the opposite week. So I was literally driving up to Atlanta every single week just to shoot for $10 right. Or for free or whatever, just grabbing models from Model Mayhem back in the day when you could actually get a good model from Model Mayhem. Yeah. You know, and just shooting whoever. Right. Because it's really like doing a bicycle, but in my case, it was like jumping on a bi- bicycle and like just right. going at it every day, like you learn, know, learn, learn. Do you want to know where I learned all that? Where's that? Shooting film to learn. Oh, well, that's great. Oh. See, that's because you have to learn there. Now, new people. <laughs> Not auto. <on> film. <laughs> There's you no take screen. A notepad. <laughs> And then you take a series of photos. Yeah. I shot this duck at, <laughs> see, that, I was shooting real ducks, not duck faces. <laughs> but at this duck, at this park, I shot this at F4 ISO 400. Next shot, I shot at F5. And I didn't even think about that. And you take your film, and oh, this is yeah. how I did it. Then I took my film. Is that so when you would look back at the exactly, pictures? Exactly. And I know, oh, man. Like, okay, so this photo was this, this photo. Okay, cool. So I know that at this light, this is what it's going to look I like. I just bought another film camera. I actually mm-hmm. went and bought my original film camera that What'd I had. Get? Um, it's nothing great. I yeah. don't want to talk about it because it's everybody be like, hey, oh, that's not a cool camera at all. Pentax Super Me 35 millimeter. <laughs> no, it's even worse. <laughs> it's like a, it's like the Rebel Canon. Oh, yeah, that's fine. I learned that the one film. Too. So that was my very first camera ever, mm-hmm. like a real camera. I had mm-hmm. like disposables before, but on my 25th birthday, my parents bought me a, a Rebel, and so uh, I also found out I was pregnant with my first child that night, and so, um, uh, but I, I shot in auto the whole time, so mm-hmm. I don't know anything about. Like shooting in film for real, right. for real. So I got it because I was like, hey, now I know about ISOs right. and F4s. And let me go take a film camera and see if I can like backwards right. go do like that. Like reverse engineer. So that's really shot. cool. Yeah. I'm going to have to take that. Like, and like that's, that's the, yeah, notepad helps tremendously. Um, and then. It makes a lot this of sense. Is, this is the benefit of learning on film. And this, this might help some of you guys. Um, it's that I couldn't, number one, you have a limited amount of shots yeah you know, 15 to 20 shots <laughs> tops you don't have no 32 64 gig. Gig, yeah <laughs> memory card you don't have the luxury of a display screen you're relying on your eye mm-hmm. and your knowledge of basic photography skills mm-hmm. right what i got what i learned out of that is i can basically walk into any situation and already know what my settings are going to be mm. right it trained my eye to see like physically see light Mm-hmm. Right. And using my imagination, mm-hmm. if I do, you know, these certain uh, uh, um, settings of my camera, mm-hmm. this light is going to do this or this color is going to do that. Yeah. And I tell people that's the best way to learn. But there's a catch because it's a blessing and a curse. Once you start seeing the world like that, where you physically start seeing light yeah. and how it interacts with the environment mm-hmm. and, you know, the items and the shadows. And you're just like, oh, my God. <laughs> you will never turn it off. It never goes away. And sometimes yeah. it's annoying because you walk in, it's like, man, the lighting in here is beautiful. Oh, I look know. at that. Look at that <laughs> ray of light right there. Ooh, if I shot that. I know. My F8. kids are like, mm. because if I do see that and mm. I do have a camera and mm. they're with me, like, oh, we have to go stand in this light, don't we? And I'm like, yep. Right. Yeah, you but do. I'm sorry. Do you kind of see what I'm talking <laughs> about, though? Like, are you able to, like, see oh, light yeah. in that? I don't know if I necessarily, I know it sometimes, like, if I'm working, especially mm-hmm. if I walk into, like, a wedding, let's mm-hmm. say that. Most of the time, like the reception, and I and I walk in, I go, "Oh, this is a prime. There's no yeah. other choice yeah. here but a prime." So yeah, yeah. yeah. But l- trust me, like I'm actually kind of curious. I would love to talk to you after you do a little bit Shoot more a little film, bit, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> because I'll tell people like, "Hey, you really want to know photography? 
take your ass outside at sunset Mm -hmm. and go stare at a tree. (laughs) Watch the sun change the way that tree looks. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, Mm -hmm. look at the shadows, look at the light. And then you'll kind of start seeing the sun as like, oh, man, that's just a giant fucking light bulb. I literally, um, it's funny because I I forgot what... um, what group I was in that somebody said this and I was like, yeah, it was so empowering. It's so funny how like you shoot for so long and you kind of get stuck in a rut or you mm-hmm. get stuck in a certain way. Mm-hmm. And, um, in the, in the certain way was, uh, shooting when the client was available mm. and it never dawned on me to go, I'm only available from this time to this time. Yep. You'll have to make that work. Yep. And I don't mean like this one day, right? But, but I mean, like I started, uh, telling them I only shoot at sunset now. Right. Because my best work is at sunset. So when you look at my, if you look at my site or you look at my Instagram and you're like, oh my God, look at these beautiful images. Then they would be like, hey, I'm going to, I want to book you, but I'm only available at 12. Right. And I'm like, you know, (laughs) you're not going to get those pretty shots. You know, the reason they have this beautiful backlit, you know, these shots is because I shoot them at sunset. Right. Okay, literally, I can meet someone one hour prior to the time that it's, you know, I'll always Google what time right. is sunset. I'll meet them one hour prior, and I can shoot them within 45 minutes Yeah, and be done. In and out. Because the light is ridiculously beautiful. Yeah. No, it really is. And the color? Oh, yeah. Mm, because yeah. it's the shade. So, you can't do better than that. Um, And then the the next step of the, I guess, the evolution of being, like, seeing kind of like that, mm-hmm. or, like, knowing your settings in and out. Right. Uh, so, you know, you got your sun, right? And yeah. So sunset. Mm-hmm. But let's say you have, like, a huge client, like, yeah, magnificent, like, oh, my God, once in a lifetime. <laughs> but they can't only shoot at one, and you want that sunset. Oh, yeah, yeah. So oh, that train Oh, I learned how to shoot me. on constants with, like, <laughs> Yeah, doing so that. constant light or yeah. even flashes and all mm-hmm. that. But so then it kind of, you know, training training the eye. Right. And I, I thank film for this is like, okay, cool. So now I know what what light looks like what. Mm-hmm. If I start bringing in flashes, how can I control manipulate it, it yep. and manipulate it? Yeah, yeah. That's where Bruce Lee came in. <clears throat> you know? Because in it's helped a few people, and I put it out now, like, my secret. You know? Because everybody, <laughs> like, I'm sure people always ask you, like, how do you do this? How do you do that? And it's <laughs> like, and you have to keep saying it over and over. Or sometimes you won't tell people. But I have a course for ninety nine ninety nine. if you'd like to buy that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> Don't. But the way I like to see light is, like, water. You yeah. know? So... You have your subject, right? Let's say I pop a flash right here. Mm. Pretend it's like a cup of water. Yeah. You know? What's that right hand, man? Oh, I know. See, there's my Latin going in. Um, so He's interpretive dancing over here. <laughs> so you take that cup of water, and you, if you were going to splash it on your subject, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, let's say you take it from, from the right, mm-hmm. right? Well, the right side is going to be wet. Yeah. Pretend that's a flash. Mm -hmm. You know, and then the dry area is the shadow, Mm -hmm. you know. So if you had multiple little cups of water or a big bucket, a beauty dish, (laughs) and then just pretend you're just splashing light on people. Yeah. You know, that's why I took, well, that's how I interpreted like the light fall off and all that. Yeah, yeah. It's just, if you can visualize light as water or as a physical thing, then it'll be easier for you Mm -hmm. to just start popping in little flashes and be like, oh, if I do this, if I do that, (gasps) ooh. So, but again, I got that from film because sometimes I think, Having that display mm-hmm. and just being able to like, and even in, oh, I'll fix it in post. Mm-hmm. You know, I hate that. Um, yeah, I don't. Yeah. Like, I always laugh that off and go, mm, you're, no. you're, you're <laughs> depending on your tool to do your work for you yeah. instead of treating it as a tool and knowing your art. Right, right. You know, and if you really take the effort to do everything in camera, mm-hmm. you'll spend li- less time behind a, uh, a computer. In allowing you more time to be a photographer, because yeah. if you're always behind a computer, you're a graphic artist. Yeah, you're not really. A photographer. You gotta be out there and shooting. Right. Uh, and shoot everything. So I can't wait for you to learn on film. Yeah. No. I can't wait to see that. That's gonna be awesome. Yeah. I, like, uh, are you curious to try film for your natural, naturally boudoir stuff? I think uh, I'm gonna take it to some sessions yeah. just to, like, you a second. Know, there's a um, a session I'm about to do with my. There's a session I'm about to do with my uh, uh, my makeup artist. She's yeah. with me all the time, and so I think I'm gonna take it in just for some test shots with yeah. her. But then you know I have like four kids. I'll probably te- do a lot of test work with them as well right. and and whatever. But um, it's yeah, gonna be fun. I think it's I'm gonna scary. do like a whole roll of testing stuff, and then I'll like do some more oh, rolls it's, for, it's so for real. Scary. It's so scary, <laughs> but it's exciting. And then and I forget that sometimes. I have a friend. I won't say his name. I have a friend who went to a camera shop, and he's like, oh, what are these cameras? They don't have display. Oh, that's a film camera. Really? 
and he opens it and there was a <laughs> roll of film in there. He was like, oh, there's a, oh, that's film. Oh yeah, I remember that. And he closed it and the shop owner was just like, did you just open that? <laughs> Yes, you, and I just looked at him like, bro, you, you just you, you fucked the Dude. film. What do you mean I fucked the film? You can't open. Come here, child. Let me, <laughs> let me explain something to you. Um, but I, I think it's a really good exercise for for new photographers. Like, if you haven't shot yet, go get a film camera. Learn on that. Yeah, you'll thank me later. Right. But I have one really super duper crazy important question to ask you. Uh oh. Right. Okay. <laughs> Time is limitless. Time doesn't matter, right? <laughs> okay. You can shoot any face in any time of history. Whose face would that be? Oh, I hate these kind of questions. I know, but I've been thinking about it lately, and there's a there's a lot of cool faces I would love to shoot. Yeah. Like even Clint Eastwood now, all those lines. Right, right. Be dope. It would definitely be. I don't know. Okay, so time doesn't matter. Time doesn't matter. You can go in back Dead in history. Live, it doesn't blah. matter. To be honest, I am such a um, therapeutic kind of photographer. In mm-hmm. other words, like I feel like I get a little therapy out of it as well right. as I feel like I also give therapy. Um, I think I would really like to shoot Maya Angelou just because Maya she's, Angelou? she's like full of like all of her quotes are just like, right. oh, they hit me so hard. Right. And so um, I'd really like to just shoot her if not right. just to talk to her the entire time. Be like, click. Okay, what were you talking about? The blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Click. What are you blah, talking blah, blah. about? I haven't done that yet, time traveler. <laughs> so where do you see my life now? No, <laughs> Talk to what her else like do you know about me? Maybe she's a psychic from here. No, I'm just joking. But she's just so, you know, right. she's one of those, like, right. I really respect. There's tons of other people, too. Like, I could just, right. you know, like, that was just think, the first um, one that came to mind, I think. Einstein would be good. Just to see what's oh, in those yeah. eyes, oh, God. you know? Oh, um, <laughs> It'd be kind of crazy. Hell, even but. Genghis Khan, why not? All that, like, just to see the yeah. man that's basically in, what, what was the last thing? I think it was, like, 70% of the world's population. He's got some of his DNA in all of us. Mm-hmm. And that would be like... What about shooting somebody like Hitler? Like, on crazy. the other, you know, the other side of... Yeah. You know, like, the dark side? Right. I mean, because people probably wouldn't think about, like, why would you want to shoot Hitler? Right. Because photography is usually, like, a very positive thing. Right. But, like, I'm a, I'm a documentary. I love documentaries. Wow, documentaries. I mean, oh, my God, I would watch them all the time on Netflix. Love documentaries. Even if the, the subject matter is about nothing. Right. I like watching them because I like how they shoot them. Right, Or Netflix. I like to critique how they shoot them, actually. Netflix. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so, um, but, yeah, I mean, that yeah. would be someone that would be, like, I mean, that would be an opportunity to. I hate you as a person. To, yeah, I mean, but that's I'm an opportunity like, to, like, yeah. photograph basically evil like yeah you know those eyes like I, charles manson that kind of like yeah because dark, um dark. it's it's i mean i wrote it well, which one of these we are you know as photographers we are the keepers of time yeah right mm-hmm. and then like like you i love documentaries and i found myself in one when castro died i was in miami mm-hmm. when that happened oh wow and i i got a taste for that like mm-hmm. a moment in time this is like an important moment in time yeah yeah right so i got a taste of that and that's what got me thinking like man if i if I could be in any other position in any time uh, throughout history mm-hmm. to like capture something like that, right. what would that be? So I've always like, yeah, there's been like a question I like to ask people all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's fucking great. Yeah, that's fucking <laughs> great. Um, the Netflix is on 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 the Netflix. The documentaries on Netflix. <laughs> uh, I love for the same reason for the cinematography. Yeah, and uh, with cinemat- cinematography, that's where I get inspiration for looks. Yeah. You know, like shooting styles. Do you like it when the, I mean, you have to be a real nerd. (laughs) Hit me with it. Do you like it when the cameras accidentally show the other cameraman so you can see what they're shooting with? Like reflections and or Um, sometimes they cut a corner. It depends on the documentary, but like, I mean, I don't really mind it. Um, No, no, no. And I'm not saying it a bad thing. I'm talking mm, about I like when they accidentally have a blooper of. Because it just kind of makes it more real. Oh, well, no, I'm talking about because I want to see what they're shooting with. I'm like, oh, oh, you have a red. Okay, well, that's on this level. Right. Oh, you have a 6D. Right. I can do that. <laughs> you know, you know or, who's cinematography I love? Yeah. And I would love to know what cameras they use. Uh, Parts Unknown. Anthony Bourdain. You ever uh, seen that? No, I need oh to see God. that. Okay, as a photographer, you're going to love it. Because <laughs> the way they shoot it, like it's a travel food show, right? Oh, okay. There's plenty of those, mm-hmm. right? It, he's, a, uh, he's a writer. Oh, okay. And he travels the world and he goes to all these places and he talks about the 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 people, the culture, the food. Mm-hmm. But the people that shoot it have an amazing eye. And mm-hmm. every single episode, the Chef's style table is really cool. It's it's similar to Chef Table. Okay, okay. Um, but I would say a little bit more 
more flair to it. Like oh, more it's flair yeah, like it's it's just it's it's the images are very powerful. Oh, and, okay, and okay. Impactful. You know what else is like that? I'm I'm a ooh, you're gonna thank me later. <laughs> Have you ever seen? I guess it's a docu movie ish. Uh, it's called Samsara. It was on Netflix for a while. Some star, like S A R A. Yeah, S A M A R A. Yeah, Samsara. Oh, okay. oh, you're gonna love this. <laughs> I, it's worth the buy. Okay. I got so homework now. <laughs> the way, like, back, back up just a tad. Am I too loud? No, no. It's your it's your right hand. You keep blocking the camera. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> like this the whole time. Okay. It's okay. So Talk with your hands, but just keep in mind you got that camera. Okay, T Rex. <laughs> Your Rex hands. <laughs> so I, I like I like the emphatic talking with your hands, but don't talk with um, so uh, the way I like to explain it is: imagine if you were able to take a step back into space and see the whole globe uh, all at once, uh-huh. like a day in the Earth, I guess. Mm-hmm. And they show you there's no audio. I mean, there's audio. There's just music, but there's no like vocals. Right? It's all imagery mm-hmm. of all around the world. Of all aspects of life, not just beauty, but the bad and too. It's almost like an emotional roller coaster too. Oh, right, right. Um, oh, it's just you're missing out. <laughs> you're missing out. It, it's it's got some age to it. Um, but I highly recommend it, especially all you guys go watch it if you really want to see some crazy imagery. Okay, cool. Um, uh, have you seen Rats on Netflix? Rats. Yeah. No, you're making me feel like I haven't watched. I mean, I feel hey, like don't, I've watched. Don't bring up documentaries because I'm a documentary. Oh no, please uh, lay it on me. <laughs> so Rats is a documentary that I heard on Joe Rogan's podcast. Oh okay. And I was like, I gotta see this thing. So what it is is they show you the craziness that is the rat population around the world, and then really? they go to New York. They go to uh, see that's the craziness I would like. I mean, that's man, just these random. Rats are smart. Yeah, rats are smart. <laughs> They're crazy smart. Like the one of the things that the the thing that. Lured me into that documentary was um, what I heard on the Joe Rogan's podcast is that I saw it and I was like, man, these rats are smart. <laughs> they send in dummy rats to set off traps or eat poison just to like they'll pick the dumbest rat in the group. It's like, hey, go get Bob. All right. Hey, Bob, go eat that. <laughs> OK, I'll go eat it. <laughs> Eats it, dies. And they're like, like, OK, poison it. They <laughs> pee on it and it burns all the other rats and they all avoid it. So they're showing how hard it is to to get rid of rats, wow. and it kind of scares you because it's like, oh my god, there's like a rat they're smart world oh, underneath my feet. <laughs> yeah. Um. What are, What are some documentaries that you like? Oh god. Um. Oh, I'm horrible with names. Um. There was I can't remember the name of it, but there was um these guys who went over to South America, and they were they basically. Uh, they were trying to live the life of the people there. And so I think they were there for a 30 days straight. Um, living on a dollar? Yes. I'm good. And they would give them, like they would pull an envelope and right. this is like, this is how much I would have earned today. Right. And it was just random amounts of money because sometimes farmers earn $5. Right. Which apparently was a lot of money. And then sometimes they would have nothing. Right. And they had to like ration accordingly. Like sometimes they would pull very short months. You remember, I guess, yeah. if you yeah, watched yeah, yeah. it. And it just was like, wow, this is really, not only was the material really good, but it was shot, I like the way it was shot too. Right. But um, sometimes, I, you know, it's weird because, I mean, I'm a human being. So I like right. some things just for the content. Right. Uh, like a normal person. But then sometimes, like my husband, he'll, he'll be at home and he'll go, wait, I can't watch this without her because she'll, it looks so pretty. Right. She's going to want to see it for the cinematography. Right. She probably won't care what it's about, but, um, as far as like cinematography, uh, there's, um, this is us. It's a, it's not a documentary. One. It's mm. a TV show and it's on mm. Hulu. Okay. And it's, um, very, you are there mm. with them, mm. like very photojournalistic, uh, over the shoulder, right. very intimate, tight shots. Right. There's very few actual pullback wide shots it's very right. much like you're right here at the table with julie and mike and that kind of stuff and um gets you right up in there yeah it makes you feel like you're sitting right here and right. You're, you're a part of the conversation and um a lot of the you know light and the lens and flare right. and stuff like that so lens flare. Every, everybody loves those jj abrams lens flare. exactly yeah so stuff like that you know i just um i eat all that stuff up so i love uh, uh david fincher style the mm-hmm. uh, um uh, uh, Fight Club Seven, oh, yeah, yeah. like you know that really gritty. He did um, what's what's the, what's the last thing he did? 
<laughs> oh, he's doing uh, the Manhunt show on oh, okay. Netflix. But anyway, the the reason I like his style is it's very contrasty. You know, mm-hmm. it's very punchy. Yeah, yeah. And his shots are practically all of them are locked off. There's not that many like, you know, off the tripod type shots. Oh, gotcha. Like all his shots matter. Yeah. You know, and I I, I can appreciate that because I'm sure you know how hard it is to try to tell. A, you know, a story in one frame. Yeah. You know, and you're trying to do that on film. Like, you have the luxury to move around. He's like, no, I'm going to put the camera. I'm going to lock it off. I want to create a shot in this frame. Mm-hmm. You know, so it all kind of matters. That's crazy. I love those shots. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love his style. Um, And then, I don't know. I kind of like all the old stuff that was shot on film, like things from the 80s and 90s. Oh, yeah. Because it's got that grain. I love grain. Do you like <laughs> grain? I don't mind grain. I think you it's know, cool. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't know why... It's become this whole thing well, where it's a comeback. ISO 100 everything. Well, you know, well, when digital, like, you know, I was one of those, everybody became a photographer. But, like, mm-hmm. you know, when you had a really cheap, crappy camera, right? grain was your life because you, <laughs> you couldn't shoot without grain being in all your photos. But right. um, but now it's like, oh, no, I have this pretty picture, grain free. And now right. I'm going to add a preset to it to put all the grain back on it. Ain't that crazy? Ain't that crazy? Ain't that crazy? And I tell people, I was like, hey, you know, you can do that in camera. Just bump it up to like a thousand <laughs> ISO and you'll be all right. That's all you got to do. What's funny is one of my... Don't be afraid of the grain. One of my buddies upgraded to a D3, D4. Wait, it was a couple, obviously years ago because yeah. D3 and D4 is actually... They what, have a D5, D5 now, yeah, right? they're on D5 now. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I'm out of Nikon. Sorry. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, he upgraded to a D3 and he was like only going up to 800 on his ISO. And I was like, dude... You have like 12,000, mm. you know, at the time it was yeah. like some like 12,000. Well, now it's like 250, blah, blah, blah. You know, yeah, I'm no, like, now you can, you can make nighttime into daytime. Yeah. It's it was insane. Like, light a match and you can light the entire room with right. the ISO. You know, it's so funny, but. But again, it's, it is a tool. Don't be afraid of, you know, wear it in. Yeah. You know, yeah. experiment. It don't. And that's the other thing too, that um, every photographer shouldn't rely on what other people are doing. Mm-hmm. Get your inspiration. Yeah. Learn what you can. Mm -hmm. There's books. There's YouTube. You know, you don't have to go to, like, you don't really need to go to college to do photography. You can learn everything on your own. Hell, I worked for free Mm -hmm. for a year to learn everything. Yeah. uh, With wedding photographers and all that. Um, So just study, study, study. Mm -hmm. That way, when you get your fancy camera, you know how to use it. Otherwise, you're just wasting your money. I would say, if you're going to spend money, if you want to take a class, business. Yeah. Not really photography. Like yeah. you said, you can learn photography yeah, from I should have done that. A whole me too. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying that because I was like, man, if I could go back in time, that would be what I would take is yeah. like I told my daughter, I was like, if you don't go to college, just take a business class, that's yeah. all I ask. Yeah. Because no matter where you go in life, you need Otherwise, to Otherwise life is going to teach you about business. Yes. And that's not fun. The hard way. Yeah, the hard way. <laughs> but hey, but that kinda um that's the adventure of being in this because like I was telling you before, the whole purpose of this whole experiment that I'm doing here mm-hmm. is, you know, for new and old uh, artists to kind of just maybe learn mm-hmm. something new that, you know, that they can take with them and mm-hmm. apply to their craft. And if they're new, to get an insight on what it takes. Because I don't know if you get this, you tell me, but mm-hmm. a lot of times people come up to me and they're like, oh, hey, it's Photo Mike. Oh, baller, man, you must be living rude, try five. I'm like... No, you do know there's a struggle to it. Ah, it's easy. All you, it's all you do is like, oh yeah, sir. Let me tell you something. Um, <laughs> the hustle is real. Yeah, so it, 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 it is a hard life, um, but it's a fun life because yeah. I think it's like a roller coaster. And I mean, at the end of a session, I do you know go wow, like people pay me to. Do, I mean, because I get as much enjoyment out of it as my clients do, yeah. and I think that's obviously. I mean, like. Uh, one of my kind of pet peeves is like I'm in so many photography groups. I need to like not be in so many. But, I'm not in any. Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> I'm in some where, and it, this is how I've dealt with it. To be mm. honest, is that <clears throat> if a certain person is just negative all the time in the group, I just go block them. Like I'm sorry. Yeah. I just I I can't deal you with you every single. Per- Thing that happens to your like anything mm-hmm. that happens to your business, you come in and you complain about it. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, it doesn't sound like you want to be a photographer. Right. Like if you're if everything is a struggle, it's not meant for you. Nope. I promise. And nope. that's true for any career. If it's if it's a complete uphill battle every step of the way, yes, there's some work. Yeah. Yes, you have to work hard. 
Oh, no, you have to actually work at the SEO. Oh, right. no, you actually have to work at the Instagram to get followers. And right. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, I heard somebody the other day was like, I remember when Instagram was just fun and it wasn't work. And I was like, it no. still is fun. I mean, it's fun on my personal if account. If you let it. <laughs> if it's my business account, right. I got to work at it, you know. Right. Nothing comes without work. Right. You have to work at everything. However, when we get to shoot, mm -hmm. that's the fun part, Right. We get to do what we love. Yep. So how can you complain? Every day is different. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> so one of the, the the first business lessons that life gives you is you have to learn money management because mm -hmm. like the roller coaster, you know, one minute oh, you're Lord. broke, the next thing you know, you land that one gig, and you're just like, make it rain, and then you find <laughs> out, oh shit, I shouldn't have rained that hard. <laughs> no. You know, because there's the three lights. months of drought. <laughs> yeah, it should have been the lights missed. You know, I should have done some nickels in there. Like, <laughs> damn it. Um, and, and you know, I learned that uh, fairly early on. You know, I got a first big paycheck, and I was like, baller. And yeah. then I was like, robbing noodles for like four months. Like, <laughs> damn it. Um, yeah. So, so it, it does comes. It does come with the struggles, mm -hmm. but I think it's worth it because my last nine to five was like almost 10 years ago. Oh, wow. And this is all I do. And oh, cool. doing this allows you to meet so many different types of people. Oh, I know. Like, it, like I got to meet you. I got yeah. to meet a bunch of the guests that are going to be on this thing. Mm -hmm. I've met them at some point through this career. Right, right. right. But if I was stuck at one spot mm -hmm. all the time, yeah. I wouldn't have that You just luxury. see your same office workers all the time. Exactly. That was the one kind of cool thing. About my 9 to 5 was probably better than anybody else's 9 to 5 mm -hmm. just because I got to work with cameras all the time. You were around cameras. I literally relevant. was the fat kid at the candy store. You know, so... Um, you even got that tattoo, right? I know, I yeah, do have the tattoo. Baller. And so um, people always say, do you own the place? I'm like, no, it was just a prank. or Not a prank, but a, a dare that yeah. I... Don't dare me. Apparently I do it, you know. Anyway, um, so, but that was one of the cool things about Epitrant was mm -hmm. um, seeing everybody come in and right. like recognizing them from Facebook. Right. Or they recognize me from Facebook and like, hey, now, right. now we like know each other, know each other because we've seen each other, but we had never seen each other in person. Right. And so um, I do kind of miss that part of it. But, um, but yeah, like you said, like, you know, meeting different clients and, and in my boudoir uh, business, I do get to meet a lot of the girls that's been following me forever. And now mm. they're getting brave and like, I'm finally going to, you know, book with you. And I'm like, yay. And it's like, it's so awesome because I, a little part of me, which I know is impossible, but a little <laughs> part of me wants to like visit every woman on my list and mm -hmm. be like, can I just, can I just give you a photo of yourself? Cause I mean, sometimes right. they're, they're, you know, like we all have bad days. Not, I know men have bad days too, but like, of course my heart is with women and uh, empowerment and, and uh, that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, I just want to, like, y you know, give them back self-confidence mm -hmm. because for whatever reason it's been stripped away from them, you know, either a bad breakup or divorce or rape or, you know, something less what a curve crazy. Ball that life throw just you. something, you know, yeah. health or yeah. whatever. And it's like you just want to kind of give them an Internet hug with a photo. Like, because right. my way of uh, my love language is gifts. Mm -hmm. And and in that sense, like my gift is photography. So right. like that's what I want to do. <laughs> no, I totally see that. I wish I could just float around and do know, that. It's, it's, <laughs> it's crazy what we can give to somebody because what we give to somebody are little capsules of times and memories. You know, yeah. like the way I see it is maybe I'm not gonna like strike it rich doing this. I'm not gonna have like a big old mansion or whatnot. Right. But just the thought, and I use wedding photography as an example. Just the thought of knowing. Mm -hmm. that maybe in a hundred years, mm -hmm. you know, the grandkids are a little older and they're going to be like, oh yeah, this is your grandma at mm -hmm. her wedding. Yeah. And it was something that I captured. You know, I was able right. to capture that, that moment in time, that story in their life that will long after I'm gone mm -hmm. is going to continue li living on. Yeah. And if you have, you know, a lot of that, you know, a lot of weddings or a lot of, um, uh, document, um, uh, you know, photojournalistic shots or just mm -hmm. even um, landscapes, cityscapes, all of, all of it, all of it. Yeah. Um, it's a little piece of us that gets to live on forever mm -hmm. or as long as, you know, hard drives still exist because, you know, all <laughs> right. that can be wiped out, which is another scary thing that nobody's printing a lot, you know? So, yeah. you know, 
Actually, I've moved into more printing now. Uh, nice. Yeah, within boot, I, I flipped from doing like the shoot and burn kind of mm-hmm. deal to IPS. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I was about to say, Laszlo, IPS. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I have to say what things are for him. So shoot and burn literally means you shoot and you burn a disc, which that is obviously antiquated now, but you would <laughs> like burn it onto a memory drive and give it to them. So there's no uh, real, like you said, no prints. Yeah, there's nothing like real uh, physical. It's just it's, everything's digital. Yeah, because, no, you know, everybody wants to put it on Facebook, blah, blah, blah. Well, now I do IPS, which is in-person sales, or for me, it's Skype person sales because mm-hmm. I don't really come back down to Atlanta just for the sales. So I'll, I'll Skype with them and show them their pictures, mm-hmm. and then we'll pick out what they want, and they can order right there. Um, it's, a, it's a really... Let me just say, selfishly, it's mm-hmm. a really awesome thing for me because you like feedback. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. You get to see them see their fi- pictures for the first time. Oh, I love that. Whereas, we do that like, the weddings. Y- yeah. And so, like, sometimes when you do, uh, you know, when you deliver, mm-hmm. like, oh, here's your Dropbox link, blah, blah, blah. It's so impersonal because you don't get to, you know, see them react to their photos mm-hmm. and the crying mm-hmm. and the... You know, especially I get a little like, stalky with that sometimes because I'll I'll stalk their page <laughs> and see all their family members. Oh, I love this photo. Oh, oh I, I can't remember when I did that. Oh, that guilty. was so awesome. I so I'll be like yes, in the shadows. Just <laughs> <laughs> I literally just delivered um, a wedding video, and uh, I wasn't friends with the bride, mm-hmm. and somehow or another, I wound up finding I don't know how, but I found her where she linked it on her Facebook yeah, page. Yeah. Maybe I typed in my name or the venue or something. Anyway, it popped up and I was like, oh, I was like, oh, because it was public. And so I could see all the comments from her husband and like everybody. I was like, at the bottom, I went, I'm sorry for stalking you, but (laughs) yeah, all these comments. (laughs) She was like, no problem. She actually friended me and everything. It was really sweet because that was actually a referral from another, from somebody else. So um. (laughs) it's all worth it. To me, that's that's what's worth it. But those comments were like, yes. (laughs) That to me is what it it makes all of this worth it. Yeah. And if, you know, if you're out there just to make a buck, yeah, there's way better opportunities out there to make a buck. Yeah, but if you're in it for, I mean, be smart. Yeah, earn you know, your dollar, but but you I, know, you know I, I like to think of it that I'm in it for the moments. Mm-hmm. I'm in it for the stories because being on the other side of the camera, man, I got some stories. You know, and I'm sure you've gone through your adventures, some crazy, some oh, good, yeah. and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've fallen down. Freaking, what are they called? The the bleachers at a basketball game, you know? Because <laughs> I'm like camera? backing up a little bit for oh, a wider no. show. Oh <laughs> god! <laughs> oh, but my camera, fine. Just put your arm up, guys. You know, you, when you're tripping, just put your camera up. Um, uh, I but broke you, a lens that uh, way. Not that way. I slipped on wet rocks. I learned really quick that had it up, but it, my hand came down it, uh, and it came apart. I learned that even if the monopod has little legs on it, mm-hmm. don't trust it. <laughs> Oh yeah, you're not don't supposed to let it. those go. Don't trust them. <laughs> you know, them, uh, them Leica lenses are not cheap. Yeah. Ugh. Anyway, um, <laughs> so like, uh, w- do you have like a particular moment that you know you just got to experience because you are a photographer that is just like, ah, oh, God, I'm happy I'm doing this. Oh Lord, uh, yes, fifteen years, um, several. Uh, you know, you were talking and it kind of brought to my mind like, there's been several times um that uh i was especially weddings Mm -hmm. um and and i have like a pre-console with my clients and 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 ask them you know is someone going to be there that's older or has traveled and you haven't seen them in a while or let me like point those out to me so i can make sure i get a photo with you with them because they may not be around much longer yeah um now that's could be true about anybody at the wedding of course like no one's guaranteed tomorrow. You know, we right. could get hit by a bus, you know, what, no matter what age you are. Um, but there was this one wedding that I did um, where the grandfather couldn't even, he couldn't come because he was so sick. Right. And the venue just happened to be right down the street. I actually lived all in the same city and everything, and it was right down the street from his house. So we actually, I stopped by with them, and I got photos of the bride and the groom in mm. their full everything, right. like with him. Right. At the house and everything. I mean, that, you know, it's like going that extra step where some photographers would be like, no, you paid me to be at the venue, not doing all this extra. I mean, like, That's no, just wrong. that right there is because obviously he didn't he didn't last much longer. And now they have right. all those photos, you know, and it's like. Okay, that's what I'm doing this for. <laughs> it's not no, for like the money at the end or review what it, or whatever. That's what makes people like you special, because you're you're not worried about the things like you know money and time like you, you're doing what you have to do what you believe you have to do 
mm-hmm. to capture that, yeah. you know, that story. Yeah. And if you have to go the extra mile, then so be it. Because that's that's how I handle things. Everybody yeah. that works with me, mm-hmm. that's how we handle things. I just I don't care what we have to do to accomplish that because mm-hmm. we have we have this moment to do this, right? Right. We don't get it back, right? You know. And if you're able to, in and, and, and brides especially, you mm-hmm. know, in the, their families, oh, yeah. they appreciate it so much. Oh, yeah. You know, and they love you and forever. And maybe not at that moment as much. As, because I think if you've ever lost someone mm. in your life, you know how precious, like, photos are. Because yeah. you don't realize how few photos you have of that person until they're gone. And you're like, why didn't I take more photos, you know? And, and a lot of people probably think I'm doing sales pitches, but mm-hmm. I'm really saying, hey, you know, schedule yourself a family session right. like i push all my photographer friends like hey trade off with me right make sure you get some of you because i'm bad about it too like you push me and i'll push you let's right. trade off you do me and i'll do y'all you know just make sure we get some family photos because we're all the time busy doing everybody else sometimes we forget about ourselves that's so true and it's like sometimes i'm like looking for a photo to post somewhere and i'm like all oh, these are like selfies <laughs> i need to have a professional shot and like i have uh no i take that back we ha- we did one last year yeah, Father's Day last year, but that's it. Last year, right. Father's Day. That's but pretty. It gets hard. It's a long time ago. <laughs> it gets hard to like get on the other side of the camera. It is. If I see a camera in a room, I'm already like, <laughs> I wonder what how he shoot it. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if I can get some shots in. Do I have my camera? Oh man, go get my camera. And um, it, I mean that's kind of like, uh, like going to a wedding as a guest. Mm-hmm. I can't do it. I just can't do it. Oh yeah. Because the whole time I'm like. I just missed that shot. What's wrong with you? <laughs> oh, he totally didn't even get the bouquet, the flashing. <sighs> you know what I do? And those, because part of me wants to do that, yeah. and part of me goes, I'm doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> I go, I'm okay. Like, hey, you know what? <laughs> because I might know I what I'm doing that. here. <laughs> yeah, there's, especially if I see the pictures after, right. I'm like, mm, I'm really doing okay. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> now, is there um, is there any other particular area of photography that you're curious about that, you know, it, it could be totally off the wall, don't even matter, yeah. that you've ever, uh, you know, again, out of curiosity to try out? So um, something I've never done, mm-hmm. but I definitely want to do, and oh my God, because we're talking to a lot of people here, I hope I that someone out there hears Help this, uh, is I would really, really, because I'm doing video too, you know mm-hmm. that, right? So I would really like to do a home birth uh, mm. film. Right. And uh, first of all, I would like to precursor this by saying mm-hmm. I am a mother of four. Mm-hmm. I know what everything looks like because right. I've had four different kind of births. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what. So I'm... like a lot of people, when I approach them, I'm like, hey, can I do this? And mm-hmm. it's their first baby. Mm-hmm. They don't know what's going to happen. Right. I know what's going to happen. Right. It's okay. There's nothing that's going to happen at yours mm-hmm. that I haven't seen. <laughs> You're because prepared for it. Not only have I had four, I've been in the room with mm-hmm. several friends that when they've had their babies. So right. I'm virtually the best person possible <laughs> that you could have besides the medical <sighs> staff. Right. You know, as far as like filming it, I'm like, just Here, hold my camera. Right. <laughs> Just give me the opportunity, you know, like, because it's really hard to talk someone into letting you come in with right. a, f- a camera if they, A, don't know you. Mm-hmm. Because I'm 43, all of my really good friends are done with babies. Mm-hmm. So there's that. And then, like, so I'm kind of waiting for one of you models that I know out there to get pregnant and let me come do this. Because they're right. really the only ones that know me well enough. They go, oh, yeah, Julie, come on in. Because right. they, would, they would trust me. Somebody's I mean, I've shot that right now. I've shot pretty much everything that they own anyway. So, I mean, like, it's not going to be like I haven't seen it. Right. But, like, I just want to do the one that's really cool, black and white, like, right. really intimate and quiet. And, you know, Close-up shots. I, I love being ninja. I love I being, know. like, a fly on the wall. Yep. That's my job at a wedding. I right. don't want you to know I'm there. I Story want to teller. just, yeah, just, I'm going to be over here. You do your thing. Oh, my God, I just saw the beautiful moment. I'm way over here with the 70 to 200. Right. Click, click, click. Oh, I just got that. Yay. You know, I'm so excited. But that's what I want to do with... Um, a uh, home birth, and I say home birth, yeah, because you have control, and plus I can be in the room, right? Like with a hospital birth, they're usually really restricted, yeah, 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 yeah. So unless you're in a really open liberal uh, hospital, right? Uh, I'm, I say a home birth just because. Which I think that's dumb. A hospital should just be a hospital. Yeah. Like, well, they have to be careful about. It's so weird, but it's so weird. Cleanliness. Yeah, I mean, it's just so weird how, you know, with things that used to be just 
known yeah. for just being a thing. Like the news used to be the news. So now you're gonna be like, which is the to room? give you an example, <laughs> my first birth had 17 mm-hmm. people in the room. Wow. And three of those were paid to be there. The rest of them were family and friends. Okay. That was Piedmont. And they let you have, they're like, see this room? And right. I was like, yeah, it was huge. And they said, as many people as you can fit in here, that's how many you can have. Uh-huh. You can put bleachers in here if you want to. And I was like, okay. And see, my first baby, I had a huge amount of friends. They were all pregnant right. at the same time. And right. that's what we did. We yeah, all like saw each other. Crowd, yeah, I know it balloons. sounds crazy. I'm sure people are listening going, seven. Did she say 17? Cheerleader squad. <laughs> yeah. And, and the funny part was I didn't know how it would be on my first baby, right. so I told my husband to make sure it was quiet as a mouse Right. because I didn't know if the noise would make me, like, antsy. Right. And so there were 17 people literally as quiet as this is right now. And I was like, it's because I had my glasses off. Right. And I was like, are there really people in I, I didn't know because it was like uh, there was a light on me like this right. and a black in the rest of the room. And I was like, are there really people in this room? Those you know? cardboard cutouts, are they real? <laughs> and so when the baby came out, I heard, yeah. You know, you're really quiet. Golf clap. <laughs> yeah. Golf clap. <laughs> you can hear like the girls. My, my girlfriend's just making these really, oh, and, like crying. Damn. And <laughs> Damn. <laughs> it was really sweet. Anyway, so my point is. Um, See, I yes, don't know that's, this. I don't know any of this. That would be, that's one of my like, I really, really want to do this. Mm-hmm. And the one time I finally found someone that mm-hmm. was like, oh, yeah. And she was like home birth. She was mm-hmm. actually up in Chattanooga, which is where I live. She actually waited too late to tell anybody, and she literally had the baby within 15 minutes of calling everyone. And so I missed that opportunity. Right. But that was going to be my first chance. And so you have to find the right person that will yeah. let you come in. It is a definite thing of trust. Right. I totally understand that. I'm like, I will meet with you. We can have coffee. Right. Or whoever connects me to you, just tell them I'm a good person. You know, like, right. just give me a referral or something. I don't know how to do it else or otherwise. No, I, I'll, I'll keep that in mind because I've been asked a few times, but I've, I can't do it. Like, I've always, yeah. I've shot after the fact, like, during. Yeah. You know, like I said, uh, if I break that lens because I passed out, you know, <laughs> sorry. I'll have to put that in, like, the, you know, the what contract, uh... like, not responsible for fainting. You know, like, uh, it's coming. Um. <laughs> You know, because I don't know, because I haven't been in that situation personally. A really long lens. You know, yeah, yeah. Can I be on the other side through the door, just through the round mirror, the thing, and just, um, uh, uh, but no, but I have been asked. So yeah, if somebody approaches me, I'm, I'm totally gonna send them your way. But awesome. have you, like, I've had the opportunity with a couple families actually. It, it's awesome and scary at the same time. But <laughs> you know, I've shot their newborns. Yeah. And then I shot their first year. Then their fifth year birthday, mm-hmm. and then I've been with some of these families for almost like ten years, where I've seen them go from newborn, oh, now yeah. they're you know playing soccer, and I'm doing their soccer photos, mm-hmm. and um, it's it's I it's, think it's, it's a weird feeling when you go into somebody's house and you just oh, see, you see you? their entire yeah. family's life yeah. laid out by your yours. work, and you're just like, whoa, yeah, I didn't hear this long with them. But I think that's like uh, I have very like. Uh, it's kind of sad to say, but like I have a few that are mm. like that, but some have gotten divorced along the mm. way. Yeah, it's happened. But like um, before the divorce, I was there for dating. Mm-hmm. I, I was there when they met. Mm-hmm. I was there. I was there for their engagement photos. I was there for the wedding. I was there for when she got pregnant. I was there for the right. first child. Um, uh, you know, and then there's other families too where um, I actually shot uh, a cheerleader, Atlanta Falcons cheerleader. Um, as a mo- she's a beautiful girl, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, as a model, and then um, she got pregnant, and I had just bought my house. And you know, when you just buy a house and it's right. super empty, I was like, oh, "Please smell. come to my house, like before I get furniture in there." So Roll she around came on the carpet. And, yeah, all it was was carpet. light, and yeah, just clean carpet. And so I was like, "Come in!" And so I shot her all around my empty house, and um, and then she had the baby, and then we did like a family session. I've shot her every year since then. She has another right. baby now, and I'm like, "Can you come up to Chattanooga?" She's like, "Of course." So I'm just waiting on to do that now. But yeah, I think that's just awesome when you're right. like, you almost feel kind of a part of the family because it's like, you just kind of wait for that call because you're like, yeah. you know, you're going to get it, yeah. you know, and, yeah. or you, I reach out to them sometimes too. You're like, of course, you yeah. know, I'm just it's, waiting it's, until it's March. Like milestones or, too. Like, yeah. The day that I fear is when one of those newborns ends up getting married. married. I'm shooting their wedding. I'm like, God, I'm old. I'm shooting <laughs> your wedding now. No. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, but it's coming. I mean, it's coming, and it, you yeah. know, it's exciting, but it's kind of scary at the same time. <laughs> um, so, um, you know what I want to try? 
What's that? I want to try cave photography. Have you seen some of those shots? Cave? Yeah, when they go like... Better you than me. I have claustrophobia. There is no way. <laughs> put me on a rope. Somebody out there, put me on a rope. <laughs> yeah, I will descend. <laughs> Just make sure that all the cave trolls are out of there. You ever see that movie, The Descent? When those uh, cave divers go in there, I know, and I can there's watch like that. crazy rat people in the cave. <laughs> make sure it's clear, but no. But I see, like, I think the reason why is the lack of light in the cave. Oh yeah, and you so, just get these little like, ra- yeah, that is pretty cool. Oh, that and it'll be up to you to paint the cave. Yeah, essentially, you know. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. It, it's a. I have weird, seen some really cool shots. It's just come amazing, out of this. And, then, yeah. and then it kind of makes you wonder, like, how they pull that off? And mm-hmm. you know, it's just one of those. I, I would like to try to do more out of my comfort yeah. type deal. Like, the one that I'm most afraid of is somebody just, you know, push me off a plane and I'm just going to, you know, you know, try to do some super wide and, you know, free fall and all that. But, <laughs> like, it's, it's, it's one of those I'm just going to have to be just shoved off. Yeah. You know, and then just... But I want to try more of that just to see, mm-hmm. you know, what I can do um, in extreme situations. Mm-hmm. I had a bride, uh, at a br- bride slash friend. I was actually a photographer's friend or photographer's sister Mm -hmm. uh and she um she got married and she wanted they do a lot of uh i don't know what you call it um not rock climbing but where you uh free um i don't know spelunking is stuck in my head that's the cave diving diving. uh, whatever it's called when you repel yes thank you thank you thank you laszlo (laughs) (laughs) for the win you don't know what TF is, but you know that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you're here. <laughs> no, fuck no, not that one. Um, so, yeah, anyway, so she wanted to be in her wedding gown repelling. Right. And they were like, we're going to put you in a harness, too, and we want you to ha- take pictures from right. being beside us. And I was like, okay. So I have my very expensive camera with a very mm. expensive lens, and I've never repelled before. Mm. And I wanted to really bad, but... It is, I mean, like, I was all strapped in. He, he was super safe. I mean, just check me and check me and check me. It literally took me 30 minutes to go, like, 12 feet. Right. But at that 12th foot, I was supposed to push off and right. go down a little bit, and I would be free off the right. rock. So, it, you know, 30 minutes down the side, which was, I'm, we're talking, like, a little short space. And finally, when I pushed off, I was like, oh, it's, it's not that bad. <laughs> yeah, it's that and the, first little. And mm. the guy that was harnessing me up was like, "I've literally done sixty-year-old women that did not take that long to get comfortable going down." I was like, oh, "Were they carrying a camera?" I mean, I don't, don't, don't know rush about you, the but... magic. <laughs> this is my flow. This is how I get my art. I'm taking my time. Uh, the the crazy part was right in the middle of that. It started raining, mm. so I'm all geared up holding a camera, and it's raining. Right. And so they had to pull me up really quick so we could get out of the rain because I've got my gear out. You know, I was like, oh, my God. And so then we had to we waited. And of course, it was one of those like quick summer showers and it passed on through really quick. And we went right back out there and I did it. I finally went down. I was like, this is so amazing. I was like, I want to do it again. They probably won't let me go because <laughs> I, I don't know if we got the time. time this hunter. I, I just don't like, know. We, got we only have like five yeah, hours. Line back there. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, but just imagine like, um, but the, I, I can I imagine saw this pictures. article where uh, this photographer had to shoot uh, photos for this article about uh, winch, uh, window cleaners of the tallest buildings in the world. Oh God! <laughs> and, that, and that photographer, imagine that photographer having. To, he, I think he had like three bodies with three lenses. Because if you're up there, oh my God! And you don't got, you know, like, why the hell did I bring up fifty? <laughs> Shit! You're not gonna go all the way down or go all the way up just oh, to get yeah. the lens. So like. Mm-hmm. Like I, you know, the preparation that you have to go through to try to get that shot. But oh yeah, those photographers, um, you know, have really like, good insurance. <laughs> yeah, 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 I don't think so. <laughs> um, but it's interesting. But that's what I like about photography is like there's so many different areas yeah. that you can explore. Yeah, yeah. It's not just wedding. It's not just models. You yeah. Know? It's everything. Or faces at all. I mean, yeah, like you know, yeah. landscape and all that. And then mm-hmm. um. You know, those who want to travel, but it's it's just one of those things where you got to put in your time mm-hmm. and you got to have a love for it mm-hmm. and you will get far. <laughs> right? Yep. Yeah. Um, And, you know, last question, just, uh, you know, an inspirational type question. Like, are there photographers uh, that you do, you know, that do inspire you or that you look up to or that you'd like? <laughs> Um, I know that's a hard one. Um, no, I'm <laughs> laughing because this is one of those things that you get asked in photography. Like, who are you? Who's your inspiration? Yeah. You guys like link your favorites. And um, 
I did have one mm-hmm. that was he was a French photographer, mm-hmm. and it was I. I always had to like write down the name or, or save the link because his name is like obviously a long French name that I can't pronounce. But mm-hmm. um, but his work is like really dark, and it was like one of those like he found just the right amount of light, mm-hmm. and it just looked like every time it wasn't fake. It wasn't a constant lights. It wasn't. Um, I hate to say fake, but you know, it wasn't a artificial artificial light. It was, um, you know, he found just a, a, this small sliver of light, and right. it was just like Casey perfect. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, "That's what I love. I love that because I just feel like it's so much more. It makes the shot so more intimate looking." Mm-hmm. And so that's my. There's a bazillion uh, photographers, but I feel like the ones who make you feel like you're connecting to the subject are the ones that I go, oh, I love right. that. It, it makes me connect to your photo because right. you connected to your client or model or whatever. And um, that's what I want. I want to make right. sure that's what my clients are or my, what my followers are right. feeling when they look at my work is like, right. wow, I'm connecting with that person because Julie connected with them. So, And the reason I think that question is important uh, is – I don't see it as just a throwaway question or like a headliner. Yeah. I think it's important for people to know who are the photographers, who are these storytellers. Cause mm-hmm. I don't know if you noticed it, but a lot of times it's usually like the model or the subject that gets all the love, you yeah. know, like yeah, yeah. True. Uh, I'll take a photo of a model and they'll get like 60,000 likes <laughs> and I get, you know, sweetie, guess what? I got 56 likes. <laughs> yes. You know? Um, yeah. and, or they talk to you on your page as if you're the model. Yeah. Hey, baby. So, you know, <laughs> I, I think it's important that, you know, the, 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 the art creators get some love too. So that's why yeah. I like that question so that um, they can see if you inspire them, they can see who inspired you and mm-hmm. you know, maybe they can kind of build a better picture. Of, yeah, definitely. Uh, I think I need to work on that. Like having like a, an inspo board yeah. of, just names, not like photos, because that's right. that's what we call Pinterest. Yeah. But um, like, but it's uh, gotta be like, like people like, like yeah, it, it's gotta be special. You can't just throw names out there. No, 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 you know, no. Like, and like, I mean, um, like a yeah, person, exactly. you know, that you like um, aspire to, not necessarily emulate, but just get inspired from. Right. Yeah. Right. Um. Well, let's end it on that. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, I think it was, it was a great episode. Thank you again so much for coming. No problem. Uh. Please plug whatever you want to plug, where are you going to be at, where can people see your work, um, how they can get in touch with you, if they have, you know, whatever. The floor is yours. Okay. So there's quite a bit. Um, you since we... We're it- all out of time. <laughs> you can write it down right here. No. <laughs> this is where all the clapping starts on the Oscars. Sorry. <laughs> play, the, play the piano music. Yeah. Um, so we started off with... Uh, <laughs> we started off talking about model safety. Yeah. So um, I wanted to say on Facebook, you can go to and find Rise Up Info. Uh, that's a, a Facebook group, and that's all about safety. That's mm-hmm. photographers, models, anybody in the industry, filmmakers, mm-hmm. makeup artists, anybody that holds a camera or is near a camera right. at any point. Uh, you know, please, if you're interested in all in helping uh, safety, be a right. part of that group. As far as me personally... Shout shout. Um, I am a Naturally Boudoir. So uh, Instagram is at Naturally Boudoir, mm-hmm. uh, naturallyboudoir.com. And I'm all over Facebook. And I do have a, um, a VIP group for just ladies. Mm-hmm. And so uh, if you look up Naturally Boudoir. Girls Club? I do. Yeah. Girls Club. Girls it's club. all about girl power and stuff like that. Girls rule, girls <laughs> true, you know, he man, woman haters club. No. Yeah, <laughs> so that's naturally boudoir mm-hmm. VIPs. They can look that up. Right. And then um, everything else is uh, well, actually I have Julie Hunter Media, mm-hmm. which is my weddings. Like my, mm-hmm. I would I would call it my personal, not everything but boudoir, basically personal right. stuff like uh, um, weddings, babies. You know, anything that you would right. consider family right. type sessions. And then all of my video and corporate stuff is Creative Road Media. Gotcha. So, gotcha. You got a whole little network going on. It's crazy. All these emails I have to like to keep up. Wait, where did that email come into? Wait, which one? No. I, no, I just try to, <laughs> man, I just, I erased so many accounts just to like try to get <laughs> Streamline. one name. Yeah. Because I was dealing with that and it was a pain in the ass. Yeah. Um, but all right. 
Dangerous All right. Hunter. That was fun. Did you have fun? I did. I oh, did. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, <laughs> most definitely. All right, guys. Hopefully you uh, y'all learned something. Be safe out there. Be Peace. smart. Peace. <laughs> oh, no, that was awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much.